Hello and welcome to the debate podcast starring Callan Mori. I am Callan Mori, and this is another special, the car special, for episode five. I have Isaac with me again, as always. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about the 10 most beautiful cars. Isaac, do you want to start out with the uh, first one, the 250 GTO? What do, you, what do you like about the 250 GTO? Okay. So, first of all, it's a Ferrari. So, I mean, really, what's not to like? Unless it's a 456. If it's a 456, it's going to look like a Ford Probe. But let me look up a picture here and kind of... Um, give myself Now, for everyone one. watching on YouTube, I might... Nah, never mind. If you're watching on YouTube, then good for you. <laughs> I was going to say I might pull up a picture, but then I realized this is going to take as much time. Actually, you know what? I might just do that. Never mind. Haha. <laughs> Joke's on you. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So the... 250 GTO is going to be your front-engined uh, Ferrari. Um, so, A, that's going to make it a much rarer Ferrari, seeing as most Ferraris are uh, mid-engine, rear-engine supercars. Um, so, I know that these sell for a lot of money, like a lot, a lot of money. And I'm assuming we're talking about the old 250 GTO because I don't know if yes. there is a new one. <laughs> I'm I'm sharing the screen oh, right yeah, now. Oh yeah, there is a new one. This. Whoa, that's crazy. Okay. Um, it sells. It probably actually. I'm I'm reading what the picture says on here. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. It says this Ferrari GTO will probably sell for over 50 million dollars. So yeah, they sell for a lot of money. Um, but. They used to be like racers, so there were some cars that uh, were driven by like famous race car drivers, so that adds to the value of them. Um, but I think the styling on this car is incredible, like the low slung race car look. Um, I think is just really, really great. Yeah, I, I like the way it's just. It's such a flowy design. Like, yeah, it's it's a flowy design. It's it's just so beautiful and it, the way it's just designed. Mm -hmm. Beautiful car. Uh, I like those little bicycle wheels. Mm -hmm. Like the wire uh, spoke wheels. You're right. The, the um, wire spoke wheels and what would that be called? Like the, the tiger paw hubcaps or hubs? I don't know. It all just looks I think like those, those were designed so that you could, like, in a race, so that you could, like, whack them off with a hammer and just get it over with. And I think that's hmm. what those are for. At least I've seen them be changed that way. Interesting. Uh, I like I like the tires of the the old like old Ferraris and stuff. The way they're just like all compared to modern day tires, it's so much simple and it's just so. It just looks so fun. Yeah. Like, those ones Those ones are, like, in the wire spoke wheels, the, like, fancy, I don't know. Like, the tires just always seem to look a lot better on old cars. The wheels seem to look a lot better. Mm-hmm. Because you have the old-style design. Nothing's complicated. No random fake stuff jolting out everywhere. Yeah. Um, you can see one thing I like, too. It's common on all Ferraris, really. The Ferrari badge on the side. Mm -hmm. I like that. Also, look at the, look at how small those mirrors are. <laughs> yeah, that'd be well, interesting. To have. I think the mirrors were probably not a big deal, especially if you're buying this for a race car. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's much better looking than the uh, Gremlin or Pacer. Because mm -hmm. it's also a Ferrari. Well, yeah, you have to consider it's a Ferrari. It's a front-engine race car. And so you're kind of going to assume it's going to be better looking than a Gremlin or a Pacer. Right. Now, I think... I know you have strong feelings on old Cadillacs, so I'm going to let you take this one over as well. Um, 
The next car is the 1958 Cadillac Eldorado. Okay. Yeah. So these cars are some of my favorites. Um, I like the mechanical aspects of the old Cadillacs as well as the styling aspects. So they weren't like these cars were not developed in a wind tunnel um, like mm -hmm. many modern cars. Like they were made to look good. Um, mm -hmm. So the picture on the screen, if you're watching on YouTube, is going to be um, the 58 Cadillac Eldorado. Now this one uh was not the height of the fins the height of the fins is going to come and the next car that we talk about the next car that we talk about is going to have the biggest fins but this one um is still like cadillac going a little fin crazy um but these ones were like i don't know they kind of like set the style for american cars in this right. time period Right, I mean, like the Bel Air, that kind of just, I mean, it's kind yeah. of like, you know, the way GM is, where you have the Chevy Tahoe, and then that, you know, somehow transforms into the Cadillac Escalade, which is a hundred plus thousand dollar thing, versus a sixty thousand dollar full-size SUV. And it's kind of like this, where they have the Chevrolet Bel Air, and then you turn that into the Cadillac Eldorado. It's kind of similar, I don't think they're the same, but similar. Yeah. So another cool thing about this specific car is that it was, I th believe, one of the first American cars to have uh, the panoramic windshield, which is where the windshield is all one piece, but kind of wraps around the sides. Oh, yeah, I see that. Um, and then it was also, I don't know if I'm getting my model years mixed up or not, but this may have been one of the first American cars to have the little... Um, bullet things in the grill called um dagmars um wait where is that like like in the bumper and the like how the grill and bumper are integrated together halfway through there's the little bullet things oh yeah yeah i see that um so i don't know i think this car the just how it all comes together is really incredible like you have the fancy white wall tires and then you have like the quintessential American styling um, mixed with the big V8. Uh, <laughs> like these cars were just, to me, they're incredible cars. They I don't were know. Powerful. Some people, some people aren't nice. as crazy about them, but um, yeah. Right. And I think uh, that's true. Um... So now, we're going to move on to the other one, which, you know, as you said previously, has the, what was it, like the biggest fins or something? Yeah, this one has the um, biggest fins on the back of it. Um, so, let's see. The one that we're going to maybe pull up a picture of, if Callan has it. Um, it's going to be the uh, 59 Cadillac Series 62 convertible. So, well, this, I'm showing the coupe right now, but. So, yeah, the coupe was also a pretty cool one. It had panoramic windshields all around. So, this one was um, definitely the biggest fins. Um, they had like the <laughs> rocket ship look on the back of it. Um, but this one is just this big like i guess i don't know i wouldn't say muscly but it's like this the point of the car was that it was big like it was a mm -hmm. huge car i mean um, it doesn't have um you know how in normal cars where they have like the pillars between the front and the rear doors like you know what i mean yeah this so this one this one doesn't have like a or b pillars um so that was like something new um, I guess. For... It didn't really catch on. <laughs> Not really. But, I mean, what do you think is bigger, the hood or the trunk? I have to ask oh, this. Boy. I think... Oh, boy. <laughs> I think the trunk is actually bigger. Yeah. If you so really you look a, at it. You have a giant V8 under the hood. Like, these cars could tow. Um, 
but they couldn't um, go fast. <laughs> no, they weren't fast cars, but they had like I guess they you, had the torque and power. They had the torque and the horsepower to pull a lot. So like you could buy one of these cars to like pull a giant airstream motor home. Um and a lot of people did that. Like they would not a motor home, but a camping trailer, whatever you call it. <laughs> Wait, hang on. I have to I have to play something that would be perfect. Okay. Um Well, he gets that pulled up. I'm just going to say, I really like the styling of these cars. I don't know. I think I am might be in a minority here, but um, I especially like the convertible. Um, like, it had the fancy, like, you got, like, almost Lazy Boy recliners in that interior. And then you had the fancy, um, like, styling, just the car styling itself. Um right. So my favorite version of this car is when you get it in the color pink and the convertible, um, like the pink uh, 59 Series 62 convertible. A is, pink convertible is your ideal Cadillac. Specifically a 59 Series 62. Um, that is your ideal Cadillac? That would really be my know? ideal Cadillac, yes. I know that seems a little weird, maybe a little it girly, is but it's a little um, weird. It, it's, it, I don't know. I think, I think I might be in a minority here, but I think that's where it's at. I think you're so. in a minority too. Anyways, I found the song. Like, <laughs> um, you know how you're talking about how this has like a big V8 and it can tow a lot? Yeah. <laughs> it just reminds me of this. Oh, yeah. So are you that. talking about like driving down the interstate with your big airstream behind your series right. 62 convertible? Preferably right. pink. Right. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> uh yeah. That's yeah, that's what I was talking about. Anyways, <laughs> our next car here. If I can pull it up. I'll pull it up in a minute. Just just give me a minute. Just give. Hold on. It's okay. All right. Uh, our next car is the. Get ready. Three thirty P. Four. I made that so exciting sounding. Yes. Like anticipation. To build up the suspense there. I had to build up the suspense. Yeah. All right, let me share my screen real quick. Da, 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 there. The Ferrari 330P4. Now, this is used um, in the famous uh, Ford versus Ferrari like thing in the movie. So this was the car that Ford was trying to beat in the 24-hour Le Mans when they used Ken Miles and other drivers using the the uh, Ford GT developed by uh, what's his name? Sh uh, Cheryl Shelby. Cheryl Shelby as a Cheryl Kelby. Almost. <laughs> Hang on. Hold on. I was. I had the right name. I just you know had to put it together. Yep. So I think that this car is. An incredible car. Um, it's the styling is really like something else, like especially for the time period that it was made in. Mm -hmm. Like this is, it's gorgeous. Like I mean, look at that. Yeah. Look at that windshield. It almost looks futuristic. Yeah. Uh, look at the wind, like spaceship. You know. Yeah. Or no, like, you know what it reminds me of. Um. In the Polar Express, I think it was Polar huh. Express, or maybe it was some other movie, where they got into this, uh, th oh, no, 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 I know what it was. It was, um, uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, or Wreck-It Ralph, or whatever it was, the movie. And yeah. they, they got into this, like, machine with this little bubble, and it would, like, pop over, and then you just, down, like, a tube. Don't, don't you see that? Like, it reminds me of that. Yeah. 
That, they have that in the Polar Express, too. It's like the pneumatic uh, rocket thing that sends them down a tube to different areas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, but was, I, can, I can see where you're going with this. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. kind of how this looks. Um, I definitely think that it's uh, like rocket ship styling, especially for the time period that it was made. Because it was, um, I think it was 1967, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So... This was like I'm gonna I'm gonna make a, a rocket ship pun here. It was out of this world styling for nineteen sixty seven. When you had your <laughs> ha 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 when you had your like your I don't know. It's just this car was very different. Um but it was a very amazing car. Like it had the get up and go. It competed in the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Um, and it performed well, except... Yeah, um, it did. Except, well... It what just was kinda, it that well, it? Didn't you, like, like, crash a or something? Line? Oh, it, it was, was, like it was something. Fuel line. Yeah, it was a broken fuel line that caused him to, like, explode or crash or something. I don't know. Anyways, in the end, Ken Miles died because his car exploded. <laughs> so... <laughs> Way to spoil the movie. On. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that's a that's an incredible car, right? Moving on to a more modern car is the um, uh, Genesis G80. Actually, I'm gonna go over here. Uh, which is that picture? Ha ha ha! Oh, oopsies. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, Google's just being weird. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, right, so the Genesis G80. Now, I know I gave a lot of hate, and I still do give a lot of hate for Kia products. Don't get me wrong. This Kia is products a Hyundai, isn't it? Suck. Well, it's the Kia Auto, or no, it is. I can't, I can never figure out who owns who. Like, it's always so <laughs> confusing. Like, I know Genesis is a branch of Hyundai. I know that much. Right. That means Hyundai owns Kia. Right? I I don't know anymore. I don't know. Anyways, it's part of that whole group. They all are together somewhat. And anyways, yes. they all share stuff. They're related. But the um the Hyundai and Kia products, they're crappy and they're poor poor build quality and I mean I was The styling is there, it's just that the build quality is not. Right, they've got great great styling. It looks, some of them looks good. The Kia Sportage does not look good. Neither does the Kia Seltos. Yeah, so, or the Kia Forte. Anyways, uh, <laughs> most of them look good. I mean, they're, they're different. They're unique designs. Uh, I think the Genesis G80, though, Genesis does a really good job of separating themselves from Kia and Hyundai. So their build quality is much better. Their material quality is much better. Like, there's no cheap plastic anywhere. And that's something I like about Genesis. So, I wouldn't mind buying a Genesis. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wouldn't. Until you've spent, like, a lot of money buying your Genesis. You wouldn't mind. <laughs> well, I mean, Genesis, compared to... So, the Genesis Compared G80 to other luxury is... car brands, it's probably not as bad, but... Right. I mean, compare this to the Genesis G80 is, uh, its competitor, I guess you could say, is um, the BMW M5. That's expensive. Yeah. I think. That's what I was just going to bring up. This looks kind of like a BMW M5, except, I don't know, it, it's definitely a different look, but you can tell that it's competing against like BMWs and Mercedes. Right. I mean, it's size. a good look. And I can show you here the interior, too. Look at that. In- oh, that's a beautiful interior. Look at that. I love that interior. Yeah. Oh, that nautical blue. That's falling in love. <laughs> I don't think I need a Valentine. I think I already got mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it, it can come with, like, a bunch of engine options and all that yeah uh, the only the only problem with this car 
is that when you drive it to work every day, you're never gonna want to get out and go to work. You're just gonna want to stay. Right. In your car. You're just gonna want to stay in your car. It's, oh, beautiful! It looks so beautiful. I love this car. I yeah. honestly do not care about the other Kias and stuff. I would totally buy this car. Beautiful yeah. car. Beautiful. I mean, I would go as far to say. It looks better than the BMW M5. I mean, the BMW M5 interior is just, it's co- its a conservative interior with BMW. Like, we see it a lot from BMW. Well, yeah. it is nice, but it's just not unique. And this is so, so unique, and it's so good looking. Like, I've fallen in love now. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's a good looking <laughs> car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> our, our, uh, our next car here is going to be another Ferrari, but it's going to be in the newer area. Uh, it is the Ferrari Monza SP1 or SP. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just a Ferrari Monza. It's a series of car. I don't know. I'm reading a bunch of stuff off of Google. I probably shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> but it is a pretty unique car. Let me share my screen again. This is time consuming. Let me share my screen. Blah, 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 blah. Ferrari Mons. Yeah, share. Uh, now, it is incredibly rare. Whoa. It is such a different car. Look at that. It's so different. I like it. So, like, have you seen the... um? Mercedes uh, Sterling Moss edition. Uh, I think so. But uh, this is kind of what that looks like. It's like an open seat, like supercar. Wait, hang on. What was it again? The Mercedes Sterling Moss edition. Hold on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. It does kind of look like that. Like yeah. Ferrari's own version, so they can compete. Mm-hmm. Except. Didn't really need to compete because it's Ferrari. No, Ferrari better. Is, <laughs> right. I mean, it's a gorgeous looking car. I mean, you have like the double decker headlight thing going on there, yeah. split by a headlight. I mean, it's just so unique and beautiful. So, like, what I like about this car is that it's so low slung. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they somehow managed to make it go even lower. <laughs> right. So, like, if you look kind of in the middle of the car, it dips down, and the only reason that it gets bigger in the back is because it has to for the wheel. Right. Like you can tell they like we're trying to make this as low, um, as sporty as possible. Well, it's a fast car. I mean, it's got a naturally aspirated V12 with like 800 horsepower, or something like that. Yeah. Zero to sixty in 2.8 seconds. I mean, it's fast. Mm-hmm. like fast and I, I like the it's kind of it kind of reminds me of like classic styling mm-hmm. like this is like, like this is like classic race car style right like, now if if you are watching on youtube and are seeing this uh you can't really see it but um they have for each like person in the car they have like mini windshield instead of like a full windshield so each person gets their own like I don't know, mini windshield thing. Personal size. So that, right, it's personal size. It's bite-sized. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they have a little bite-sized windshield. Personal can and, windshield. Right, right. Uh, and they have that, and it's, I don't know, probably to help with aerodynamics or something. Yeah. Because then you don't have, like, a whole windshield. You don't have as much resistance from the... Yeah. Although, with that, though, you might get some bugs in your teeth. Yeah. Oh, I got a Isn't joke. McQueen style. I have a really good joke. It's a really good one. Okay. Uh, how do you know when a biker is happy? They'll have bugs in their teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. I, I find myself laughing at that every time. Anyways, moving on to another car. It's like a lot of them. And now this one is, again, uh, very... Well, not very, but it's a newer one. Uh, hold that wrong. I'm looking up the actual car right now. We have them listed. I'm just looking it up. 
so I can find a picture. But it is the Mercedes uh, S class. Um, I don't want to. There we go. Hang on. Sorry, it's taking a little bit. It is a beautiful car. Beautiful. Truly beautiful. I mean, uh, with the thing I'm about to show you, you can also see the uh, picture inside. Of the inside. Now, it's meant to, like, carry people around. Like, you're not... It's not... I mean, you can drive it, and it's really nice to drive. But it's also, like, a rear passenger type of car. Kind of like yeah. a Rolls Royce. So it's like a family sedan with a big motor that's fun to drive. Except the family sedan is, like... The a DeVos nice family, family sedan. <laughs> it's it's the DeVos family. It does specify which family. The, um... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, this car is very nice. It can come with a V8 or V12. Uh, it's twin turbo. Both of them are both engines are twin turbo. But it's it's a really good example of conservative but yet elegant and beautiful styling. Styling. I mean, it's just simple, but it's beautiful styling. Yeah. I mean. And the interior is really where it, like, shines. Uh, I'll show you this picture. I don't know when you'll be able to see it, but it's, like, this, uh, like, a mocha kind of interior. And um, you can see from the dash, like, there's a set of lines coming from the screen, and then it goes down onto the door. And then it just continues on. And look at all the ambient lighting. There's a ton of ambient lighting in the S class. I mean, there's ambient lighting on the speakers, ambient lighting literally everywhere. Like if you wanted to try sharing your screen again, it's not showing up on mine. So I don't know if it's showing up for other viewers. Oh, it'll yeah, that's a problem. It'll load. It'll load for the video. But anyways, it's got a a beautiful looking interior. I just love it. It is a yeah. great car. It is a common, like, rich person car. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, not rich, that's, it's kind of got a negative connotation. But, uh, like, a wealthy person would drive it, like a uh, uh, celebrity or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful car. It now, is. moving on yeah. to our next one here, as I continue to do this. You see another Mercedes, and it's still newer. Uh, it is the E60 Mercedes E63 AMG wagon. This car, I know it sounds weird because it's a wagon. Most wagons don't really look that good, but this one, this one actually looks okay. It's it, not okay. It looks good. It's, I mean, it looks better that. than okay. I'm I'm gonna put that out there. Just okay is not okay. That's why it's <laughs> it. I'm kidding. Um, it can go 217 miles an hour. I just saw it from the caption of the picture right here. If you're watching online. Oh, never mind. Never mind. It's a different Mercedes. That's a modified Mercedes. I'm like, holy crap! It's a 217. Mi That's like Lamborghini speed. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, it's got a V8. It's got all the same stuff as an E63 AMG, but it's a wagon form, and it looks so good. I like I like this picture right here. This picture really does it justice. I mean, again, it's a, it's another great example of like conservative yet elegant and beautiful styling. And I've got that classic AMG grill, which everybody yeah. loves. The five spoke um, AMG wheels. It's fast. It's like it's for a family. It's it's a family soccer mom car. <laughs> so I think this car could have definitely been a lot different. I think they could have made it a lot more boxy. I think they could have made it like so much worse in so many ways. But the amazing thing is they didn't. I right. think they it's like a super sporty looking, muscly looking car that and I just find that incredible because I don't think I've ever seen a wagon that looks this good before. Right. It's it's a really because it's it's based off the sedan, and mm -hmm. so it shouldn't be boxy. And 
if they made a box set, yeah, could have gotten mad and it would not be on this list. But it is on this list because it didn't make a box set and it made it look really good. And it's really stanced. Like, it's stanced really well. Yeah. Which is something nice. So it's a perfect grocery getter because uh, it's got a lot of storage in the back or, like, storage space in the back. Uh, yeah, I would get it as a grocery getter. Now, the Go next one. Family fair and be the coolest car in the parking lot. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, our next one, for all you JDM fans out there, it is the, you ready, the Supra. Now, wait, it is not the BMW Supra. <laughs> I, I am happy it's not the BMW Supra. I think if we wanted to have the BMW Supra on here, we would rather put some kind of BMW coupe on here because I don't well, know. Why don't we just put the Woodchuck M4 on here? Anyways, mm. this is the Mark IV Supra, the classic one. Um, if you watch Fast and Furious, and you know, now I'm much, I, I sh I'm showing the picture for um, an unmodified one, which is really hard to find today. Um, yeah. most, because most people modify them because they're they can be pretty fast uh and now paul walker uh in his movie for fast and furious had a supra a mark IV supra next to this is his picture or the not his picture but this is super's picture of his mark IV supra if you're watching it on youtube it's the replica uh but somebody did actually buy his Supra. I don't remember who, but they bought it for like $15 million. It was really expensive. Now, if anyone wanted to know how Paul Walker died, he died in a car fire from an expensive car from a Porsche Carrera GT, I believe. Yeah, right? I don't know. Oh, yeah. It was that... I think. I'm pretty sure. Uh, he died because the car caught on fire and he couldn't get out. So, yeah. R.I.P. Paul Walker. Anyways, it's a very common uh, drift car, drag car. It's an everything car. And it's all around sports car. <laughs> right. It can be tuned to be insane. Yeah. And so can a Civic, and a Civic can have a laptop, and, you know, that's scary. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one, of, it's just, again, let me go back to this picture. It is a perfect, again, a perfect example of just, like, styling that's just conservative, but yet mm -hmm. elegant and beautiful. And they really knocked it out with this. I mean, I for the new Supra, I don't think they should have gone with BMW. But again, even if they did, it's still a BMW. BMWs aren't bad. I mean, they're good cars, but it just kind of yeah. ruins the whole thing of the Supra. When it's meant like to be Toyota the spirit steel of the engine, <laughs> right? It's supposed to be like you could modify it to like really a, a ton, you know. That's why yeah. they made the engine so strong, like, uh, material-wise, because people... They, it was meant to be modified. They made it so you can modify it, because back then, uh, Japan had put a limit on how much horsepower a car can have. I think it was, like, yeah. 200 and something, or, like, 300. I don't know. It was somewhere around there. Low 300s, high 200s, something like that. I think it was actually, like, 317. So... Obviously, they just posted the numbers. It's like 317, and it was faster than it was. But uh, you could then modify it. They wanted you to modify it. Yeah. Uh, it, it was... This car is just nice. And it was a beautiful car, and I would buy one because it's a beautiful car. Now, again, JDM fans, woohoo. It's your lucky day. Hmm. We now have another final car okay so this is the last car on our list i believe um and i think by now if you said yeah jdm fans uh, i think 
Some people are going to know what this car is going to be. It's not a Miata. It's not, no, not a Miata. Um, <laughs> That's a girl the, car. Uh, okay. R34 Skyline GTR. Now let me um, share my screen real quick. Okay. The R34 Skyline GTR. It is a great car. Uh, now, I can't remember which one of them was actually banned in the United States. Yeah. I don't, remember, I, I don't think it was this one. It was like something before that. Anyways, it's a fast car. Again, it's modified. It can be a drift car. It's, yeah. Made in Japan, obviously. Mm-hmm. So JDM stands for Japanese domestic market. Is what JDM stands for. Yeah. Uh, and compare it to the R35. Like, I'll show you a picture here, real quick. The have we have the R34 and actually the R35, and just compare those two. The R35 is like the new one. Ooh. There's a big difference. I mean, the styling yeah. difference is big. Uh, I personally, I think both the GTRs look great. Mm -hmm. But I think I like the R34 better. Yeah. And I have to agree. I just can't. It's just simple styling. Again, most... That's a, kind of a hint for most people. Uh, the most... Beautiful cars are simple and elegant. Yeah. Like British people. They have to be simple and elegant with my tea. <laughs> <laughs> the Queen of England. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I get I get the podcast has apparently viewers from Australia and Germany. Wow. How can they even tell what they're saying? Does it like translate? I don't know. They can probably they probably learned English. Well, Australia is different. Australia, yeah, Australia. You know, they just have to understand our accent. And then their accent, right? Everybody has an accent. And then Germany. I don't know how they do that. Maybe they just know English. I mean, Germany is the like closest language to English or something like that. Which is kind of surprising, because it's like, I, hang on, let me let me let me show you. I'm gonna do Google Translate or Apple Translate for you real quick, and just uh, we'll translate a word here, and I'll tell you that it's like oh, Portuguese, not huh? German. Uh, Germany, German, German, German. Okay, let's say hospital. Right. Why hospital? Krankenhaus. That's what it sounds like. Ready? Krankenhaus. Krankenhaus. <laughs> now here's what um hospital. It's just hospital and Krankenhaus. Or let's try. We'll try Germany actually. Deutschland. <laughs> Deutschland. I think we should probably be wrapping up here. Right. I was just yeah. Tangent. Anyways, um, this has been the debate podcast starring Callum Mori. I, as always, will be Callum Mori for the foreseeable <laughs> future. Probably until March 5. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Isaac, for joining me. And oh. Just so you know. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Speaking of Kia and Hyundai. Kia and Hyundai have recalled over 500,000 vehicles due to a fire risk. Mm. Thanks, Kia. Anyways, sure. uh, moving on. <laughs> just wanted to let everybody know. So they might want to check it out. And you can do that at Kelly Blue Book, Kelly, haha, kellybluebook.com. Uh, where you can check out your VIN number for recalls or stuff like that. And it'll say stuff. So actually what it was, it was like... Uh, it was like a fuse in the ABS thing, module, whatever. It's what would catch fire. So, yeah. Fun times. Right. Ah, oh, always fun to have a Kia. Anyways, this has been the debate podcast starring Kel and the car special. I can talk really fast sometimes. Sometimes. Anyways, have a great 
life, everybody. Or day, or whatever. I don't know. I don't care. Anyways, thank you, Isaac. Yep.